Hi guys, so I just want to do a quick video on frequently asked questions. I put out a post recently on my Instagram just asking people to um, ask me some questions and what I've done is I've narrowed it down to around sort of 20 questions just to run through quickly. It's not a, it's not going to be a long video um, and to be honest with you we're probably going to add more of these kind of videos to the to the platform to cover more questions that people have on social media and we're, we're continuing to add some FAQs um, for the students that sign up. So the first question is entry points, when to enter a trade and uh, forward slash entry points. So basically everything that I do within my course and within my analysis is predetermined areas of interest, sometimes weeks before it's even formulated. Now the idea is, is that if you're finding areas of interest based on multiple layers of conferences, then all you simply have to do is once you've found these points on higher time frames, is wait patiently and sit on your hands wait for price to get to the area of interest when it does you'd simply scale down so if your analysis is on sort of like the daily the four hour um, you'd sit you'd wait you do nothing and then when it gets to that area um, you'd scale right down to the hour and the 15 minute and you begin seeing how those candlesticks are uh, for formation uh, formating really you're kind of seeing you know the price action you're really getting into those tight tight parts of price and seeing are you forming dojis are you forming indecision candlesticks and then is that then being followed by a bearish or a bullish engulfing candlestick so you're seeing if the 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 part of price that you've you've um you almost like sectioned off boxed off that you're interested in you're seeing if that area is actually being respected like you thought it would now you can only do that by then scanning in and watching price action, seeing how those candlesticks formate. Now, generally speaking, you'd have to wait for that first tap, and then you'd ideally get on the second or the third tap and use the first tap as benchmarks for stops. So with regards to entry points, predetermined areas of interest using technical tools, and then once it gets there, um, monitor price action on a much smaller time frame so you can see a bigger picture. Because obviously there's there's um, you know there's four 15 minute candles in an hour, one hour candlestick and there's four hourly uh, candlesticks within a four hour so there's really no need to be on the four hour time frame when you're looking for entries you just want to get down right down to the hour and the 15 minute next question um, how to prevent closing trades too early and being confident and how to prevent overthinking now with regards to closing trades too early this comes down to um, not having any confidence within your trading strategy um, this comes down to not um, figuring out where your target is before you've even placed a trade. Now, something that I talk about heavily within the course is if you cannot place a stop loss and you don't know what your stop loss is, then it is not a trade. And secondly, once you have defined your stop loss and it is a healthy stop loss, you should then be defining your target. You should be doing this way before you even click buy or sell. You should be defining your stop loss, defining your target, and that is it. Now, once you've placed your trade, you need to let it run to your target. Now, there's things that we can do within trade management. For example, taking off a percentage of our profit at the 0% FIB, um, and also break evening our stops at 25%, 30% of our target. Now,
you're going through this learning process can be very damaging to your trading. Um, you know, you can see maybe somebody saying go long, AUD, USD, or someone saying go short, GJ. Um, you shouldn't just take that. You should be doing your own analysis, your own technicals, and, and trying to really find your own identity within the market instead of just being a sheep and following what everyone else is doing. Should I trade the news? So, yeah, so obviously don't trade the actual news itself um, because obviously that is gambling. But, you know, if the technicals line up and you were already in the trade prior to the news, I cover this within the fundamental section, then, um, you know, like I said, news acts as a catalyst to move technicals the way they're meant to go. So don't directly trade the news. Don't just, like, jump on your MT4 and just randomly place a trade before news events because that you might as well go down to the casino. But, you know, with regards to technicals, then, yeah, sure, of course. I always hold trades for the news. I always hold trades over the weekend if I feel like, you know, it's beneficial to me. Um, news doesn't really concern me too much. If anything, I use it as an, another excuse to get in or I use it as a catalyst to actually move my technicals where I want them to go. How to backtest properly. Now, again, I've covered this. It's in journaling and backtesting. Um, you know, you can use programs such as Trello. You can use the bar replay, but I have covered this within the bonus videos under journaling and backtesting. How to find support and resistance. Now, listen, guys, support and resistance, it's important. It's something that is respected within the market. But it is only one layer of confluence. A lot of you traders that I've mentored so far, um, your trading strategy just seems to be basically plotting support and resistance. And then when price gets there, if it forms one candlestick like that looks like a doji or something or a spinning top, you seem to just sell. It's just not enough confidences. There's so many things that go on between support and resistance, fib levels, patterns, um, you know, all sorts of things. So you can't just trade off just support and resistance. But with that being said, I like to plot support and resistance on higher time frames using the line chart because I'm more interested in body closures on, say, for example, the weekly because I'm more interested in where price closed as opposed to where price uh, went throughout the week. But on the smaller time frames with regards to support and resistance, I'm not necessarily just going off wicks or just going off body closures. I'm going off areas where it shows the most reaction, regardless whether that is... Um, regardless whether that is wicks or body closures, I'm just looking for... The general average, so I'm looking for an area where it's been tapped and touched the most, which provides the most strength for that line. So it might be a mixture of wicks and a mixture of body closures, but I'm finding the general average. Understanding how to enter on a lower time frame. Again, this is covered in entries. It's all about predetermining areas of interest, and once you've predetermined those areas of interest, um, then obviously you'd scale down to find an entry and then you're looking for your first tap and using that as your benchmarks for stops. How to compound account. Compound account is all about finding higher risk to reward um, setups. So you're finding setups that provide at least sort of like a one to two, one to three, one to four. The higher the risk to reward, the more return you're going to get on your account. And then, you know, generally compounding would be obviously leaving the money within the account and then recalculating your 1% of your account and then keep going forwards like that. So, you know, compound account can be tricky when you need the money on a weekly or monthly basis. But if you can afford to leave a percentage of the money within the account and then recalculate your 1% based on that new account balance, and this will help you compound your account. How to build a routine when working a 9 to a 5. Now, I would never suggest to anybody, even if you are a full-time trader, to be sat in front of the charts day in, day out. It's about doing your homework on a Sunday, choosing your buyers for the interested pairs that are providing the most opportunities, and then simply predetermining areas of interest before the week ahead started. And then you could set an alert. You could basically set an alert before price gets there. So you get some sort of email notification um, whilst you're at work. Or you can just generally monitor it whilst at work. But to be honest with you, there should be no reason as to why you should be sat in front of the chart all day, every day, looking for setups. Um, I do know people that do work nine to fives, and maybe in the morning they do their homework and they do it before work, and then when they get home, they, uh, you know, they go back on that, or they're placing slight entries for the for the day when they're getting alerts. So it can be achieved. It's something you have to work around your own routine. But um, you know, for a little bit of reassurance, I would not suggest sitting in front of the charts all day every day so i hope this has been beneficial so far guys there's gonna be plenty more questions and other videos like this i'm gonna do um i just picked the main 20 and i'm sure there's gonna be loads more so stay tuned for the next faq video